it's your girl Santi, also known as Fairy Plant Mother. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This is my very first YouTube video, so I am super nervous about recording this. Um, but today we are going to be talking about leather. So I will be um, transferring this ficus burgundy into leather today. Um, I have a few other plants that are in leather um, that are doing well actually. So this variegated monstera. I got as a cutting, it was unrooted, I got as a cutting from eBay maybe in May um, and it has been sitting in water for months and no roots have um, sprouted yet. So I decided to switch it over to Leka, give that a try and so within three weeks little roots came out. Um, so I am very excited about this. Um, I also have a pink princess philodendron also I got from eBay. doesn't have any roots yet um, but it's only been in Leka for about two weeks. So um, hopefully within the next few weeks, some roots will grow out. And then I also have this Monstera and then this Calithia also in, uh, in LECA. So what is LECA? LECA stands for Lightweight Expanded Clay Aggregate. Um, so it's basically these clay balls. Um, LECA allows your plants to absorb the right amount of water while also getting oxygen to the roots. Why use LECA? Um, a lot of people use LECA because there is no soil. No soil equals no bugs or no gnats specifically. I have had spider mites on this ficus burgundy, which is one of the main reasons why I'm switching it over to LECA. Um, I sprayed a bunch of neem oil on it a few weeks ago and it looks like there is still a few spider mites on here. Um, so I am switching it over to LECA just to avoid any more pests in the future. There are a lot of pros and cons to Leka. So I'll start with the pros, of course. It is very hard to overwater or underwater your plants because you see the water level at all times. As long as the roots are not sitting in water, it cannot be overwatered. As long as you keep some sort of water in this reservoir, um, the plant is going to get moisture and it's going to get that water to the roots. So you don't have to worry about overwatering or underwatering because you can always see the roots, you can always see the water level. Um, another pro to LECA is that, again, you can see the roots. So if you are propagating something, like I am propagating this pink princess philodendron, um, if it was in just soil or if I was propagating it in moss, it'd be a lot harder to check on the roots. But with this, I can easily see through the glass the roots or um, it's not nearly as damaging to the roots if I dump this out, look at the roots, and then put the LECA back in here. Um, so another pro, you can always see the roots. So especially whenever I'm propagating these rare expensive plants, I like being able to see the roots to make sure that the roots are growing properly, that there's no sign of root rot or anything like that. One of the biggest cons of LECA is that because there's no soil, it does not have any type of nutrients. So you must make your own nutrients. What I use is um, Flora Nova Grow. I just got this for my local hydroponic store, right? It cost me maybe 10 bucks. I can put the link in the description box below. Um, I'll put all of the links of the things that I use in the description box below that you can find it on Amazon. Um, but I got this at my local store. It was maybe about 10 bucks. Um, I use half a teaspoon per gallon of water. You can use distilled water or tap water, whatever water you like. Um, but you have to check the pH of that water. So a con of like a is sort of that it's sort of a lot of work in the beginning, but it pays off in the long run, in my opinion. So what I do, again, half a teaspoon per gallon of water. To make sure that you have the right nutrients, you must test the pH level. And again, I just got this from my local hydroponic store. This pH kit was $7.99. And so what I do, you open up the little test tube, It comes with a little dropper, so you get some of your nutrients. It's not enough. All right, so you don't need that much. Drop it in there. Eh, I'll do a little bit more. You add a few drops of this. Um, it says add three to five drops. One, two, three, four, five. Shake it up really well. 
you want your pH to be anywhere between 5.5 and 6.5. So again, I just took the little plant food, put it in this dropper, added some of the test indicator, and it has a little guide on here to show you exactly where your pH level is. So it looks like mine is about, I'm not sure if you all can see it in the camera, but mine is at about 6.0, so it is the perfect pH level. I don't need to add any pH or pH up or pH down. However, um, you might want to invest in some pH up or pH down. If your pH is way too high, if you have a pH of 8.5, that means you need to add some pH down. Just a few drops of the solution will bring down your pH. If it is way too low, pH up. I personally have not had to use either one of these yet. Um, I tried making plant food with distilled water and I noticed that the pH was way too low and I at the time did not have any pH up. My hydroponic store did not have any and I just did not feel like ordering from Amazon and waiting. So I dumped that, tried it again with tap water and that tap water actually had the perfect pH. Whenever I added the Flora Nova and everything, I did not have to use any pH up or pH down. So I haven't had to use any of this yet. However, I, um, depending on where you live, depending on what type of water you have, um, whether it's tap water or distilled, your levels may vary. So I would definitely invest in pH up and pH down, just in case. Another con of LECA is that it can be a little bit time consuming. So besides having to make your own nutrients and your own plant food, you also have to wash your LECA and let it soak. Um, so I use this 10 liter bag, Hydro, Hydroton? Hydroton? Hydroton. It is made from Mother Earth. Um, it is on Amazon. I got it from just my local hydroponic store because I am impatient and did not want to wait. Um, but I'll post the link on Amazon where you can find it. I know Ikea also sells it as well. I have not tried the Ikea brand, but I've heard so many good things about it. The brand that you get doesn't matter necessarily as much. They're pretty much all the same. Um, what really matters is your nutrients. Make sure those are the right pH level. So whenever you first get your Leka, you have to wash it really well. This is a bag of clay. It is disgusting. Um, so I put mine in the sink in just a little pasta strainer and I rinse it off really well. I uh, use my fingers and kind of like brush all the excess dirt and stuff off of it. Once you rinse it and clean it really well, you have to let it soak. Um, some people don't let their soak. Some people let their soak for a few days. I personally let mine soak just overnight um, and I haven't had any problems with that. I've seen some people just let it soak for maybe one or two hours. Um, I just let mine soak overnight and I haven't had any problems so far. Another method that I've seen is people will boil it. So they, once they rinse it really well, they will boil it on the stove for a little bit. Um, just to get all the excess dirt and any bacteria or anything off of these clay balls. I personally don't have time to boil it and let it soak overnight, so I just let it soak overnight. Um, and again, I haven't had any problems with that. But once you let it soak overnight, I strain it again in my pasta strainer and then I kind of just let them dry for a few hours. One of the best things about Leica is that these clay balls are reusable. So say once um, I am done with this plant propagating, if I want to plant it in soil, I can just wash these little Leica balls off and reuse them for another plant. So once you have Leica, unlike soil, you can reuse it as many times as you want. Whenever I repot a new plant in soil, nine times out of 10, I'll dump all the old soil and buy a new bag of soil. But for this Leica, now that I have this, I don't need to go out and buy more. There are tons of different ways that I've seen people use Leica. The easiest way is to just get a glass vase. This is a glass vase that came with some flowers I got a few years ago, and I decided to just use it for Leica. Um, so what I did was I added Leica until after I washed it, let it soak, and let them dry off, of course. I filled this vase about maybe halfway with Leica. Then this is just a Monstera cutting that I took from one of my mom's plants, um, so there are no roots on this yet. So I put the stem where roots will grow about halfway up, and then I filled the rest with Leca. I shook it a little bit to make sure all of the Leca fell to the bottom and that all of the um, roots or that the rest of the node, especially the node, was all covered in Leca. And then I added plant nutrients until about a third of the way up. Um, this has, some of the water has evaporated already in this past week. But again, I fill it up to maybe about a third, um, but I make sure that the roots or the node is not touching the water. 
if those roots are in the water, it will most likely cause some form of root rot and you will lose your plant. Um, so whenever people switch plants from soil to LECA, a lot of them die because the roots are in the water. They're touching the water and they get root rot. Another reason why plants die whenever they are switched from soil to LECA is that all of the soil has not been cleaned off of the roots. So whenever I switch this plant over, I have to go in, make sure there is no soil on the roots whatsoever. Um, there are a lot of different methods for that, but I prefer to just um, dump all the soil out, take my little kitchen hose with high pressure and spray it as long as I can to get the uh, soil off. And then if all of the soil isn't off, I might just place it in a glass of water um, for a few hours just to loosen up that soil and then I remove all of the soil. I make sure not to leave it in that water for too long because too much water will cause the roots um, to rot. Another way people use LECA is they will use, uh oh, this is my favorite thing about LECA. They're little clay balls, so if they spill, super easy to just pick up and reuse. So this is my Raven's Easy that, I don't know if you all can see, little bug bites. Um, some sort of bug attacked this plant. So once I cleaned the roots, I decided to just switch it over to LECA. So another way, besides just using a glass jar, is you can use a grower's pot and a little cash pot. So this grower's pot has my LECA. Same thing, I filled LECA about halfway up. And then I put the bulb of this Raven's Easy in there, filled the rest up with LECA. And then I pour my nutrient water into the little cash pot. And I make sure I only fill just a little bit, make sure that the roots are not submerged in water. Um, but the thing with this one is you have to be a lot more diligent and you have to check more often how much water is in there. Um, there always has to be some sort of water in there. If this dries out, then your plant will dry out and it will be underwatered and it will most likely die. So you have to make sure that there's always water in here. However, can't be too much water. If these roots that are in here get submerged in water, it will cause root rot. Plant will die. So this one, um, I was just lazy. I didn't feel like, or I didn't have any glass jars at the time whenever I converted this one over to like a, so I just put it in a little cash pot. And it has only been uh, maybe two to three weeks and it seems to be doing well so far. Um, has not put out any new leaves yet, um, but these leaves have not died yet. So I'm gonna take that as a good sign. Another way people do LECA is they will get these little glass jars. So I got this from Dollar Tree the other day for a dollar. Um, I drilled a little hole in here because one thing with LECA is that, of course, you have to add more water. You have to add more nutrient water periodically. And so I have my LECA on a schedule. On the first of every month is whenever I add my nutrient water. I will check it throughout the month if the water reservoir starts going lower and lower and I need to add more water, then I'll just use regular water. You don't want to add nutrient water because it will be just too many nutrients for the plant at a time. They need to slowly absorb the nutrients. And so some people will add more nutrient water every two weeks. I personally only add it once a month, um, especially for newer plants because I don't want to give them too many nutrients at one time while they're trying to get adjusted to LECA. So for this Monstera, I added this plant water in on the first of this month. I have just been adding regular tap water in to make sure that the water level stays high. And then, um, so at the end of this month, what I will do is this little hole. I will use that to dump all of the old water out and then I will add new water. I love having these little holes because it's so much easier to just tilt your plant and cover the top and release all that water rather than this one. Whenever I go to change this water, I'll kind of have to hold this and dump it like that. And it's a little bit messier. So I will link a video in the description box of how exactly I drilled these holes in glass. Um, it's not as hard as you think. You just have to get a certain drill bit. And I will post the drill bit that I bought from Amazon in the description box below, of course. So I'm going to go clean these roots and I'll be right back. So I'm back. Here are the roots of my ficus burgundy tree. Um, I cleaned as much of the soil off. I didn't want to damage the roots. Whenever you clean the soil off, you want to get as much soil off of the roots without damaging the roots. Um, of course, damaging the roots will make the transition from soil to LECA a little bit harder because it doesn't have roots. 
Um, this ficus has honestly been struggling. I have not been giving it, giving it as much attention as I should have. Um, so I'm hoping with this transition to LECA, it will thrive a little bit better. So the last step to converting a plant to LECA is putting the LECA in the vase. So I'm gonna fill this up to about where the hole is with LECA, and then I'm going to put the roots in. Sometimes they fall a lot. One con, um, sometimes I find random Lekka balls on the ground that I didn't even know fell, but super easy to clean up, not a big deal. So that's about halfway full of Lekka. Then I'm going to gently place the roots in there. Make sure you don't damage the roots. And then you just fill it up to the top. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Give it a good shake. Make sure all the LECA settles down to the bottom. And then add your nutrients. Again, only about a third of the way up, not anywhere above this hole because the water's just gonna fall out. And then make sure they're not, uh, the roots are not sitting in the bottom. So I'm gonna leave it about there. That's about a third of the way up. Um, I'm gonna double check. None of the roots are sitting in the water. Um, so we should be good. I will come back with an update for you all in a few weeks, just to so let you guys know how this plant is doing. Um, and then I'll also update you all on my other plants that are in Leca, letting you know if they have survived and thrived or if they have committed suicide. Um, <laughs> yeah, so. I will again post everything that I use in this video, everything that you need to convert your plants over to LECA in the description box below. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share it with your friends, share it with everybody you know who would be interested in plants. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching and welcome to my channel.